Today's video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Stick around to find out how we used Energy Sage to find an approved installer to help us generate power on the roof of our home and follow the link in the description below to start your own journey to solar self-sufficiency. I don't know about you, but COVID has really screwed up my perspective on time. Either that or I'm just getting really old quickly. You see, it feels like only yesterday that I was sitting here telling you about getting solar panels installed on the roof of my home, which also happens to be this channel's main studio. But it's actually just over a year, and as such, it's time for an update telling you how much electricity we've generated, how our energy use has changed over the past 12 months, and to share some of our plans going forwards. But first, a quick reminder that if you like our special blend of content, we would love it if you'd consider hitting subscribe and that notification bell, as well as checking your notifications as preferences for this channel and sharing your favorite bits from this network with your friends, colleagues, and loved ones. And if you want to go one step further, stick around until the end and I will tell you the ways that you can help us to grow. So back at the start of last year, my wife and I decided that we should look into getting solar panels installed on the roof of our home. And thus we began to do some scheming. Because we own electric cars and we also have a 100% electric house, there's no gas or oil heating, so everything is electrically powered. And because we're total nerds, we tend to use quite a lot of power. Add in the fact that we run a server room for this channel, not to mention all of the studio lights and editing equipment, and our electricity bill has always been on the more extreme end of high. And because we were on a green tariff, which adds a surcharge to ensure an equivalent amount of green energy is purchased to the power we use, it was even more so. But hey, we haven't had to buy gas for nearly a decade, so that's good. I'm not mosting. Well, maybe a bit. So my wife and I did some back of the napkin maths at the time, and we realized that we could refinance our home by shifting our mortgage to a lower rate of interest. That in turn gave us extra cash spare that we could use to buy solar panels. There's a link to a video in the description where we explain more in depth about how we made it work. Armed with a 10 year low interest solar loan from a local credit union, we made the decision to purchase a 15.03 kilowatt peak solar array made up of Alpha Series REC 445 watt solar panels, Sunmodo roof mount system and Enphase microinverters. We got the permits approved, got utility sign off and the system was installed in early April. By mid-April, it was all approved, turned on, and we were generating power. Since then, the system has behaved impeccably. We've had no issues generating power, although I should note an early software bug from Enphase meant that the system wasn't reporting power generation accurately for the first two months or so, and we ended up generating far more power than the system reported we did. And boy, did we generate a lot of solar electricity? How much? Let's look at the numbers. And when it comes to electricity generated, which is purchased from the grid, I'm looking at net consumption numbers from my utility. That means any electricity we exported to the grid is actually factored into the energy we purchased from the grid. Because we know how much, roughly, we generated on the roof, we can split it out rather nicely between energy we purchased versus energy we generated. Our solar array was officially turned on and connected to the grid on April 16th, 2021. And in the year since, we've generated 14.8 megawatt hours of electricity. That's 14,800 kilowatt hours. But remember though, our first year's generation is going to be a little less than we think because of that software bug. In the same year, we consumed a total of 25.4 megawatt hours. That's 25,400 kilowatt hours of electricity from the grid. If we compare that to the previous period, April 2020 through to the middle of April 2021, where we had no solar panels, we used 41 megawatt hours of electricity. Solar panels have really helped ease our electricity bill. From April 2020 through April 2021, our largest electricity bill ever, December 2020, was an eye-watering 500 and 
our highest electricity bill in the last 12 months, when we had solar panels, $490 this last February, was in a month where the temperature was five degrees Celsius on average, lower than it was in December 2020. That said, it was also a month where we managed to generate 746 kilowatt hours on the roof. Like I say, we use electricity for our heating. Our worst month for generation was December last year when we generated just 209.7 kilowatt hours for the entire month mostly because the Pacific Northwest was hit by a pretty intense set of weather systems that resulted in more than a foot of snow falling at the house and covering our panels for more than a week. As to our lowest cost months in terms of electricity bill, prior to getting our panels installed, our cheapest month for electricity, $331, was in April 2020. Our cheapest full month after solar install was July last year when we spent just $138 on electricity and we generated more than two megawatt hours of power on our roof. Thank you, Midsummer. Our utility doesn't offer us money for generating power, but the power we generate is used to offset our consumption. On a really good sunny day, our solar panels can be generating upwards of 14 kilowatts peak. Even if the house is using a few kilowatts of that to run servers and charge cars, we are still sending a sizable amount of power back to the electrical grid. In the middle of summer, when days were at their longest and we got great weather, we were able to peak at more than 90 kilowatt hours of generated power on a single day. And while some people have questioned how we'll generate enough energy on a cold, miserable, wet day, or actually another day ending in Y here in the Pacific Northwest, I'm really happy to report that it's been very unusual that we haven't had a good amount of generation. In fact, it has to be a really miserable day before we have a terrible generation day. See, gentle rain doesn't hamper generation all that much. Snow and hail do, as it did earlier this month with some unseasonably cold weather and snow, again, covering our panels. But unless it is really, really hammering down in the middle of a thunderstorm, we still manage to easily generate upwards of 20 kilowatt hours per day. I'll talk more about our next plans in a moment, but first a word from our sponsor. Energy Sage is a nationwide service that allows homeowners to input their address and research their solar options by safely receiving no obligation quotes from solar installation companies near to them. It was Energy Sage we used one year ago when we were looking to install this 15.03 kilowatt peak solar panel system on our home, and the process we experienced was nothing but A star which is why we are happy they are still sponsoring us and working with us on this video. When Energy Sage collects your details on its website, it then forwards them to a verified solar installer in your area, who are then able to place a bid through its website to install your system. Because installers have to be bonded, registered and verified to work with Energy Sage, and the work is both vetted and regularly verified by customer reviews, you should be secure in the knowledge that the solar professionals you're interacting with are the real deal. And because Energy Sage pairs you with local contractors, not massive multinationals, they are local to you. They know the local incentives, can make sure your installation is up to code at both national and local levels, and might even be able to help you with local financing. And if you're looking for grid-tight energy storage solutions to go with your solar panels, many verified Energy Stage installers can help you with that too. Additionally, you don't pay for the service. The installers pay Energy Sage for an annual membership, depending on how many projects they would like to bid for every year. Like all of the checks I've just shared, this really does sort out the good installers willing to stand by their work from those shady companies you often see advertising with the false hope of getting the government to pay for your solar panels. You can find out more about Energy Sage by following the link below. Remember, it is completely free and there's no obligation to buy anything in order to get those quotes prepared. However, and this is a full disclaimer, we are working on an affiliate sponsorship here. So if you follow the link below, we will get a kickback, which hopefully will help you and us as well. Our little sponsor segment out of the way, let's talk about the future. 
Now, we've already got solar, and it's already providing a huge amount of our electricity, but our bills are still too high, primarily because of the heating we have here. In the middle of winter, our heating accounts for as much as one half of our total electricity bill. So we're about to have a heat pump installed here at the house, or rather, two. We've had to take out a loan to make it financially viable, but in the interests of future-proofing our home and reducing power consumption, it is the next logical step for us. We've chosen Mitsubishi Hyperheat Systems, and yes, I did say systems. That's because while one heat pump could easily heat and cool our 2,000 square foot home, the tiny upstairs closet that is now the Transport Evolved server cabinet struggles to keep things cool even in winter. So we are having a dedicated heat pump installed for just that room, a very small one, and a second for the rest of the house. This means that the server room won't make upstairs unbearably hot in the summer, and we'll hopefully have fewer hardware failures in our server cabinet, both in terms of hard drives and also other things going wrong. Those who watch Take Two may notice we just lost a network switch, because of extreme heat in our server room. And of course, because we are getting a Ford F-150 Lightning in a few months, we're also going to look into getting the vehicle to home integration system sold for the F-150 Lightning through Sunrun. It's not clear when we'll be eligible to order one or indeed the final price, but rumors are it's going to be expensive. And sadly, Sunrun doesn't operate in our area, so we may have to wait a while. But ultimately, we want our truck to be able to operate as a backup power system to the house and maybe one day store excess solar energy rather than send that back to the electrical grid. Oh, and there is also an electrical panel upgrade on the way and some modifications to our existing 400 amp rural supply although that's probably for another video. And so there you have it, our solar panel ownership experience just one year in. Thanks for watching and thanks to Energy Sage for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check them out at the link below. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the description. And if you want to tell us how awesome we are without leaving YouTube, why not try a super thanks? It's easy to pass on the love and it all helps to keeping the channel growing. Don't forget we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and reviews. And if you want the most comprehensive roundup of all of the news in the EV world on a weekly basis, check out our TEN news show every Saturday. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drehoita, Brophy Wolf, Tessa in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen and Charles O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Chris Ascenta and Danny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month patron supporters, Master Award, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below. You can hit the YouTube join button to become a channel member, or you can send us a tip through Ko-fi or buy some cool swag like this t-shirt from our swag store. I will be back soon with more awesome content, as all the rest of the team. Until then, thanks for joining me. Keep evolving.